In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Octane Scatter to create a forest very quickly and easily uh, and render it in Octane for Cinema 4D. So for this video, I'm using the forest.c4d scene. So I'm going to close the live viewer here and I'm going to take this tree here and just unparent it from the Octane Scatter. And I'm just going to delete this node altogether so we can kind of start from scratch. So what we have here in the scene is an extremely simple tree object. It's kind of low poly, simple geometry. The cone is something that we don't need, so I'm going to get rid of it. So let's just focus on the tree here. So the tree, some leaf geometry. It's got a couple of shaders. That's got just basically a brown uh, glossy shader for the trunk. So not exactly the most fascinating thing in the world, just quick and dirty. Um, and then I'm using a mix material for the leaf. And again, this is pretty simple. It's just one image for the top and another for the bottom. And so we have a lot of leaf top images and then leaf bottom images. And they're both being plugged into an octane mix node. And then I'm using the polygon side node to determine, you know, the top is on one side of the leaf and the bottom is on the other. So pretty straightforward stuff. So we can close that. So, and then we just have this ground object, which is just a plane with a little bit of a, a hill in the middle of it. The first thing we need to do is add a scatter node to the scene. So I'm going to go into the Octane dialog here and choose Objects, Octane Scatter. And we can switch back here to regular shading. So what do I want to scatter on the plane? I want to scatter the tree. And the tree is made up of the leaf and the trunk. And so what I can need to do is just take the tree object here and parent it to Octane Scatter. The next thing I need to do is determine what do I want to scatter the trees on? Well, the answer is this ground plane here. So I'll go into the Octane Scatter attributes and under the Distribution tab, I'm going to click on this arrow here and then choose that ground object. And you can see immediately we have a bunch of lines all over the objects indicating the placement of the trees. So by default, the distribution is set to vertex, meaning a tree will be positioned on each vertex of the ground. Uh, that would be good for an orchard, I guess, but I like to have something a little bit more random. So instead of vertex, I'm going to choose surface. So this is a little bit more randomized. So let's do a render using Octane and see what it looks like. So go in the live viewer window and click on the render button. So you can see it renders very quickly and we already see uh, the trees on the ground represented by these lines. Uh, the trees are all the same size and orientation and uh, we don't have much control over how they're placed on the surface just yet. So this is where things start to get a bit more fun because now we can use textures to determine the placement, uh, size, and orientation of the trees. So I'm going to close this for the moment and go to the Octane Scatter node. And so I can get a better idea of what the trees are going to look like on the plane. I'm going to click on Display in the Scatter node settings and set the display type from Line to Object. Now we can see the trees. So let's go back to Distribution and take a look under Parameters. So the first parameter count is how we control how many trees we have in our forest. So if I bring this up, we see it gets very dense. We have a seed value, which basically sets the randomization of the trees. And then this keep away uh, setting allows us to maintain distance between the trees. Right now it's zero, so trees can kind of overlap each other, which might be less than realistic. So I'm going to set this at 0.1. If I raise this to one, you can see that we're going to lose some trees because it's going to eliminate trees that are overlapping. So if it's too high, we're going to start to lose some trees. So we want to find a value where it's not too high, but we have a decent amount of space between the trees. 0.25 looks pretty good. So under parameters, we can control the placement of the trees in the forest using a texture. If I go down to shader, this should really say texture, not shader. It's a little bit confusing, but they mean texture. So you can add a texture, for example, a noise texture to control the placement of the trees. 
So the noise texture will allow you to use a procedural texture. And if you're going to use a procedural texture, it's a good idea to actually use Cinema 4D's procedural textures as opposed to Octane's textures. This is mainly because the Octane textures are calculated by the GPU, which is going to cause problems for placement of the trees. So it's much easier to use the uh, procedural textures that come with Cinema 4D. Or you could also use a grayscale uh, image map. Basically, the grayscale values of the texture are going to control the placement of the trees. So let's choose noise here. And if we go into the distribution under noise, you can see we have min and max values, which can affect the number of trees and their placement. I can click on noise here and change the type of noise. So instead of a straight up noise, let's try cell noise. In this case, we're going to get something that's more organized along a grid. Take a look at what the cell texture looks like, or we can try, say, cranal noise, or turbulence, or VL noise. In some cases, they're going to have more of an obvious effect than others, but they can go in here and adjust some of the other settings, like high and low clip and brightness and contrast and so on. So I'm going to go back to Octane Scatter, and down here, under Scale, I'm going to turn on Link to Distribution, which means that it's going to use the same texture that it's using for distribution for the scale, to randomize the scale. So now we have smaller trees and larger trees, and I can go in here and maybe make some more adjustments and get a little bit more variety in the sizes. If I go back to Octane Scatter, uh, I can add a texture to the rotation. So let's add a noise texture here. And for the X value of rotation, I'm going to set this to 180. Or you could even try, I don't know, let's try 250. So you just want to use the X value, and this is a way to start to randomize the rotation of the trees. Let's do 250. And then there's other settings in here, like you can adjust the uh, how the trees are aligned to the normal of the surface, change their up vector, and so on. Let's go back up here, and I'm going to You can see as I'm bringing up the high clip, we're getting even more randomization in the size of the trees. So it's really just a matter of kind of playing with these settings until you get what you like. Let's do 3500. There we go. Let's take a render and see how it looks. So here you see the forest as it stands right now. The original tree surface, of course, is not the most exciting tree uh, model in the world. So the forest is looking a little bit bland. But if you start to vary the color of the leaves or create a more interesting tree model or even layer several octane scatter nodes within a scene, you can start to build a really realistic looking forest. And you can, of course, use other different types of geometries. This would work for blades of grass or leaves scattered on the ground or simple geometry like cubes and spheres and so on. You just want to make sure that you're not using something that's too complex or it'll start to uh, tax the memory of your system. Uh, but you can obviously create a fairly realistic looking forest very quickly if you have a nice tree model or two or three different types of tree models. That's the basics of using the Octane Scatter Node to create a forest in Octane for Cinema 4D.